We are back here at the Key Centre, part of the Sydney Olympic Park complex. A very impressive venue indeed. For the uh, HSBC BWF Australian Open 2022. These are the results so far on court one. And we are now moving to the fourth match of the day. Semi-final day here in Sydney. Men's singles now. Luke Guangzhou of China takes on Malaysia's Ng Tzu Yong. So there's a potential for an all-China final. Ng Tzu Yong and Koda Naraoka hoping to play spoiler there. What a year Naraoka has had. He's on his way to Bangkok next month. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the players, Lu Guangzhou from China. And he'll be taking on Ng Zi Yong from Malaysia. a good bit of support there for Ng Tzu Yong when he came in. So lots of Malaysian flags around. Equally, you're hearing a lot of Jiaoyos as well from the Chinese fans. So this will be one a treat for the fans, certainly. Luke Wang Tzu leads in the head-to-head. -head. Only the one match they played, the Malaysia Open. Ng Tzu Yong's home tournament. How do you see this one uh, playing out, Gronje? Um, yeah, I mean, Luke Wong is the favourite being high-ranked player, but Ng Seong has definitely shown that he can beat top 10, top 20 players, uh, top 20 ranked players, so he can definitely have an upset here. Yeah, that only match I played with went to three, and it was a tight one in the last one, in the last game, 21-18. Uh, Luke Wong 26 years of age. He's uh, 178 centimetres tall. Not far away from his best ranking, which uh, he achieved in May of 2019. There's a Sudirman Cup gold medalist in 2021. Thomas Cup got a bronze. This is his part so far. The big story, of course, is he beat Lizzie Jia, the number one seed here in 70 minutes. Lizzie Jia, of course, had to win that and go to the semi finals to have a chance of getting through to the World Tour Finals, so he's spoiled the story here. Perhaps a bit of revenge on behalf of Malaysia for Ng Tzu Yong, let's see. So Ng Tzu Yong is uh, from Johor, right in the south bottom of uh, Malaysia, 180 centimetres tall, playing at his highest ranking at the moment of 32. But we put those rankings aside at the, at the final stages of, of a tournament, don't we? Because, as you say, Ng Tzu Yong has taken scalps before. Yeah, he's definitely shown he's up there with the best. I mean, he's still quite young. I think this is his first proper year on the World Tour playing some of the biggest events. So he's still learning a lot, I'm sure, from every tournament like this. Dropped his only game against Hyo Kwang Hee, who's a great player in his own right. But, uh, yeah, hammered him in that last game, but didn't he? 21-5. May have taken a fair bit out of him. Let's see. Ready to play. This will be by far his biggest test. Cynthia Tam, the umpire for this one from Australia. Portal from the United States is the service judge. So there you go, there's a Chinese flag, good Chinese contingent in the crowd. But I can tell you, lots of Malaysian fans as well. Certainly, by, judging by the numbers that crowded around Li Zijia after he lost to Lu Guangzhou, there they are. You can play spoiler here, Ng Tzu Yong. He's got a bronze from the Sudirman Cup in 2021. Gold in the mixed team event at the Commonwealth Games earlier this year. And a silver 
in the men's singles. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right. It was the Commonwealth so Games as well where Malaysia. he beat Lokin Yu and Shrikant. Yeah. Probably his two biggest wins maybe so far. It shows exactly and what he can do. He hasn't won yet on the World Tour on Young. Luke Wang has won the Canada and Australian Opens. That was back in 2018. Play. That was his best year, in fact. Ladies and gentlemen, our next match on court two is our men's double city final. Please welcome our... Nice start, isn't it, from home. Delicate from him. He does have that beautiful overhead that's quite hard to read, whether he's going to go hard or soft. So his drop shots can be quite deceptive and see. Well, <laughs> Luke Hong Tzu got out of that one, didn't he? He was in danger. He's got some good scampering defense there. One, yeah. four. Oh. Look to be right on top of that point. Same number of matches in their career. These two, we won two hundred and forty-three coming into this tournament. Has won eighty-seven, lost fifty-six, and so he's played one hundred and thirty-five. Won ninety-seven, lost thirty-eight. So he's got a slightly better record. Win-loss overall. Jump smash from Luke Wang Tzu. It's been a good year for Ng Tae Yong with 42 matches played, he's won 29, lost 13. Not quite as good for Luke Wang Tzu. He's played 32 matches, won 18 of them. Challenged that he looks, he said it's touched. Looks so young. Well, that's not what the challenge is going to show, is it? No, <laughs> not yet, anyway. Maybe one day. <laughs> Technology challenge successful. Yeah, that is certainly a talking point these days. Unsuccessful. But he wasn't, he was trying to so point out to the umpire that's not what he was asking, but of course. You can't really do much about that. Really good. Yeah. Wonderful stuff from the Malaysian. Should be quite happy with that. Just how hard is it to do that, Gronik? Give us a technique to be able to bounce back up and then play a really good shot afterwards. Yeah, obviously physically hard getting up that quickly. But even the dive itself, to be able to still Five, control the shuttle three, and that block that he plays as he's falling and having to try and catch himself without hurting his wrist, it's, yeah, there's a lot going on. 
Couple of very good points for Unser Yol. And it, it, do you guys do you guys just literally just train for recovery, like play shots, get up, play shots, get up, something like that? Yeah, singles players do. Yeah, it happens so more you know, for them, right? Yeah. Yeah, so frequently, especially in the men's singles, that they will repeatedly practice that. But it does look like he might have strained something, maybe. Do you think that was off that that recovery shot that we're talking about? Yeah, it could be. It's hard to tell what is hurt right now. Kind of stretching out his arm, so maybe it's his back. Got a little bit of strapping around that left knee. Oh, it's actually his back, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so he could have twisted something when he went for that dive. Because he dived and then he turned round, didn't he? Yeah, so it's a very, yeah, it's a full body action where he's going down into that plank position and standing up very quickly, twisting. The jerking movements could have irritated something. Now, if you're the opponent and you're seeing all this, you obviously want to take advantage of that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, Lu Gongzu, he needs to just keep playing the way, like, he's playing the long rallies, taking the right initiatives, but he's going to be looking out to see if there's movements that Ng Seong is struggling with and then try and exploit them. Finish there to kill off the point for Lou. Nicely well, done there by Earl. So far, no ill effects. From what looked to be a slight injury niggle to his back. Early days, of course, but we'll be happy with that point. Holding it there long enough for Lou to think he's going to lift, starting to go backwards, and then having to, yeah, readjust to come in for that cross net. Oh, he had him, didn't he? Into Young. Yeah, that was unlucky. That was really good pressure on the net there. Oh, that was frustrating for the Malaysian. So I put that one away. That's the action that may have done his back in the first place, but he seemed to get back that one okay. Continue with the rally. Six. Yeah, seems all right Eight. for now. Delightful shot from Lou as well. Losing <laughs> the net. Beautiful net control there. earlier the Malaysia Open it was very very tight between these two Luke on to winning 21 16 21 23 21 18 I was playing some really sublime shots isn't he until you yeah he's really getting all the corners here Beautiful length and his clear shots right into the corners and then can't get much sharper than that drop shot right there. Landing just past the service line. It's a pretty steep angle. Oh, 
This time he does put it away. And he's on a roll. He goes into the interval. And so young with a five-point lead in the first game. He's 11-6 up here. So Ong Tae Yong is in the lead here. He appears to have a little bit of a background, but he's played some really good stuff. Here's Luke one too. I was going to say, at this point, he's really finding his range and getting <laughs> his shots really well in the corner, making the court very big for Lou, but <laughs> that went quite a bit long just then. Defensive shots. Now six, he's in a good position here. Unto Young, power on. Take this first game. points there for Luke Wong too. This is the point where Ng Seong would really want to focus and not Nine, let Lou get back into the game now. You can see that Lou is starting to get a bit pumped. He's realizing he has to amp himself up to, to get these points back. So really try and just you know keep the keep the foot on the throat Ng Seong here. Bolt. Three in a row for Luke Wong too though. And now, do you think that pressure might just start 13. to be playing on Tae Young? Yeah, yeah, I think a few in a row, he might feel like he has to do something a bit more now, and that could either he could either pull it off or maybe make a mistake. But he should probably keep playing these patient rallies that are getting him the, these points so far. I think he has really good patience in this game. Four in a row, Lu Kuang Chu is building some momentum here. He's applying the pressure on Ung Tse Yong. There's only two points in it now. Well, he'll be really happy with this, Lu Kuang Chu. 6 2 is winning since the interval.
will be actually delighted um, to have finally broken that run of points. Yeah, you can see at the start of that rally, he really tried to inject some pace into it, being more aggressive. as Lou was keeping up on to Mita Young. He broke that run of points. It was uh, five in a row there. 14, 12. Most importantly for Lou, he's within striking distance. This is the thing with badminton, isn't it? It can swing so quickly, even though you might have a, a very decent lead. Yeah, the momentum changes can be wild and quick. And as a spectator, it's really entertaining. <laughs> as a player, sometimes it can be really frustrating. <laughs> oh, That's good. Right on the line. So again, just when Lou was on the tail of Unser Young, he's again just relieved that pressure that was building up on him. But remember, just a few minutes ago, he was seven points behind Lu Guangzhou. He's put himself right back in contention here. Yeah, he's a bit annoyed at himself, Lu Guangzhou. That's a shot he should be making. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. But Nseong was hunting it right there as well, so he did need to hit perfect shot to get away with it. Frustration there for Ung on the serve. 14, done by Lou. Oh, he's gone wide. He'll be frustrated with that. Yeah, for sure. Lou did so well to get out of that half court smash. Even this lift here, I think, in Se Young's net roll. Yeah, great defense. 15, 16. Shake of the head there from Se Young. Now, Lou. Every time he's been got within a point of Ung, Ung manages to get a point back. Not this time. They have finally drawn level. This is great stuff from Lu Guang Tu, who was seven behind. He did well to get that one there. And then really just changing the angle and rushing. Taking all the time away from Ntion. And he has now gone in front, Lu Guang Tu. What a turnaround. Surely he'll be flooding himself now with confidence, right? Yeah, I think he's definitely on a run here, Lu Guang Tzu. Ling Xiong is probably feeling the pressure a lot in his head after having that lead. And for it to be back, well, for him to be behind now. Now they and Forsteris appearing as well. 18, it's, it's not easy to put that completely out of your mind, is it, when you've had such a good lead? Yeah, you definitely think a little bit about, oh, I'm ahead, I can do this kind of thing, and then to have it slowly slip away and feel like you're losing that control can be really frustrating and you can kind of be at your wit's end for knowing what to do now after what you've been trying to do isn't working. That one looked a bit long. I think Min Young maybe doesn't have as good a judgment of what's in and out as Lou. A bit younger, a bit less experienced in these big stadiums. Well, he is definitely on a roll. Lu Guangzhou. 19, 16. 
Looks a little bit self shell shocked at the moment. Well, he was desperate to stop that run, Lil Tiong, and disrupt the momentum. Lil Tiong's coach there giving him some instructions. A lot of those kind of holds around the net and little flicks that Lin Siong is able to do is what catches Lu Gong Lu off guard as well. Because he's not as fluid in his movement, he can get a little stuck once you make him stop and not be as quick to restart, so those holds can be quite effective. Oh, drive serve. That was a really graceful slide dive. <laughs> Staying in it. That's the third. What a point! Hunter <laughs> Young! Getting like three smashes down the line there. Very impressive. Well, he looked down and out, didn't he? And he just recovered each and every time. I would say that he definitely practiced this, that shot. <laughs> <laughs> to have hit it three times in a row perfectly, it's pretty impressive. There's also that little part of your mind after you dive once on court that you've left sweat there. And so that You're thinking could, about that? Yes, but also Lu Guang Zhu would be thinking about that, ah. being like, oh, maybe he'll slip if I, d if I make hit, hit it there again. But 18. kept getting it back. 19. Sometimes a point like that can be a catalyst for you, right? Yeah, yeah, it can be. When we'll you, see with this point. Yeah, because it's just one point in it now. And so will be buoyed at the moment, be jubilant that he's won that. Absolutely crucial this point now. But it's Luke Wang too who comes out on top and sets up two game points. 1-2, what a turnaround from earlier on in this game. Yeah, that was impressive, really good composure from him to get back in the end. So Luke Wang-Tu takes game one against Ung Tiong, 21-18 in this men's singles semi-final.
So game two here. And so yo, he's got to put that out of his mind now. Draw a line under that first game, despite the frustration that came with it. Yeah, I think he definitely just needs to take the positives from it, that he was leading, that he, you know, has the right game. He just needs to not let it get away again like he did in that first one. Because well, he played some really good stuff, didn't he? Early on, especially. Yeah, he was hitting all the corners, some great angles in his drop shots, really making the court big for Lu Guangzhou. Then I think just got a bit passive, some errors crept in, and it just ran away from him. Young. Oh, sorry, Luke Wong two, and so Young two up here. Two, love. Mind of that when they, the only other match they played, and later opened a few months ago. Luke Wong two won the first game 21 16, and then and so Young bounced back to win the second 23 21. Oh. Again, he had a whole court to aim at. Yeah. <laughs> One. You can see he just two. committed to that forehand and didn't have any option really. Couldn't change the angle. Another good news, of course, for Ansiong. As of now, we're not seeing any after effects of that back problem he seemed to sustain. Lovely. So we'll look to but uh, and so you felt that was out. A little bit of confusion by the line judge there, <laughs> starting the signal of that the out um, movements and changing his mind. Looked in to me, but let's see. Yep, good call by the line judge. He looks a bit happy with himself. Not successful. <laughs> One challenge remaining. Exploits here in Australia have propelled him into the World Tour finals. So the At the expense well. of Lizzie Jia, who needed to get to the uh, semi finals at least. The man he beat in the process. So he pips the Malaysian into the World Tour Finals. So, so all this is useful court time, isn't it? For Luke on to in preparation for that World Tour Finals. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the China team haven't been able to travel for the last few years, so they're really just catching up on tournaments this year. Um, as we mentioned earlier, they've been based in Thailand so that they haven't had to deal with the Chinese quarantine bubble every time they enter and leave for tournaments. So, yeah, I think they have some you know, tournament experience and getting used to that intensity again on the World Tour to get used to. Uh, Thank you. Chinese representative.
catching the tape there. Oh, and again. Five, four. His uh, best performance this year, We're going to up till now, has been the Malaysia Masters. Got to the semi finals. That's a Super 500. And now he's leading here in the semis to get into the final tomorrow in the Australian Open, which will be a fine way to set himself up for the World Tour finals. See. in his mind. Five, six. Look too happy with himself there. Luke Wong Challenges. <laughs> no surprises. Four, There's a out. challenge there from Luke Wong Bit more hesitation by the line judge. Yeah. What do you think, then, Gronje? Uh, kind of looked into me. Yeah, <laughs> I'd agree with that. By the hesitation, perhaps from the line judges, it was Seven, close, wasn't it? Five, Very close. Play. Well, that's why you have technology. Super short lift there that Nsiong was able to get out of trouble with. That's good. Oh, we're going to. Will he be correct? Two in a row here. Oh, I thought that was in. He's done well, isn't he? Correction. Out. I think he did have the best view of the shot <laughs> being directly. Over it, Five, a two in a row. Not often you see that in two play. correct calls as well. In the player. Two instances where without technology it would have you know, yeah. been unjust, I guess. Again, can those sort of things play on so something like on his mind that those would have been two points that he thought he had and then it would snatched away from him. Yeah, I mean, initially when you get the call, you have that Six, internal reaction of, oh, eight. you think you've won the point, and yeah. then to have it reevaluated and find out you didn't is a bit disheartening. And to have that done in two consecutive points. Yeah. It's going to hurt. So he's got this three-point lead here, Luke Wong Tzu. Remember, Wong Tzu Yong is surging ahead by this stage. Oh. 
recovery. Ooh, was that going to be how anyway? Oh my gosh. Excellent work from Munsa Young, but he's fallen just short. Lou stretching him to his limits there. covering the court really well, isn't he? Yeah. Incredible. Ten oh, in a good position. Touch there from Antio. That was a great rally by him then. I think he was in control a lot more of that rally, taking initiative and paid dividends right there at the end. Thank you. This was the exchange of drives. Showing off their double skills. <laughs> Seven. Just in. Eight, right in that corner. Ten. Clawing back some of that deficit on Tio. into the interval Luke one two with a three-point lead eight not quite as big a lead as um young had in that first game but it's 11 eight in game two with Luke one two already in the lead from that first game So we just saw there, Gronje, um, Ung Tsung again getting the spray, second time in this match. That's now got to be a concern, surely. Yeah, I think it would be. I think from knowing 
backs and badminton players, the things that irritate it most are the full-on smashes and then probably the twisting in the defense mm. in those dives like we saw previously that might have been the initial irritator of it. But at this point, he has nothing to lose. Uh, he looks like he's just going to give it his best shot. So we'll see if it's good enough. Well, he's got the first point since the interval. Make that two in a row. Ten, eleven. All of this, of course, will not have gone unnoticed by Liu Guangzhou. And we were mentioning that Tiao Bian, a now retired player from China, was coaching Liu Guangzhou in that interval. He's obviously stepped into a coaching role for China now after being a top men singles player himself. Three in a row. Excellent. Ung Tse Young, remember, it was, it's kind of flipped it, hasn't it, now? Because it was Lou in this sort of position in the first game. action type of thing going on in his rallies. Yeah, it paid off there for Lou, forcing the error from Ng I think he's the one initiating, injecting the pace in those doubles situations. Just adding the pressure, giving Ng Tseong less time to decide his next shot. A bit more of a reflex shot coming off the racket. They set the pace right off there. We're going to. 15. Again, Luke Wong Tu. towards that. 
Number 21 13. for Liu Guang Tu. quite fully assert himself yet at these latter stages. Yeah, and Seong's still hanging around. As much as Lou would like to wrap this up quickly. 14, 16. Hong Tuyong doing all he can. And it's the Chinese shuttler in the ascendancy here. two. Yeah, no real chance for Hung Tiong once he had to go and retrieve that, didn't he? Yeah, best he could do there was a half-court backhand clear, 18, giving 14. Lou a lot of space to smash. Within sight of the finishing line now, Luke Wang Tu. Wang Tu Yong, if he wants to stay in this, has to make his move now. Just giving Lu a few too many opportunities to attack. And he's doing really well to get that speed in and then finish the rallies. Again, and he can't get to that one quick enough. That was superb. That was a really beautiful, patient control rally by Lou Gonzo. And it sets up six match points for Lu Kuang Tu. Thank you. Great composure with that last shot there. He could have rushed it and he just took his time and played a perfect cross court net. Point saved Service by Hong Tiong. A long way to go, though. 
It's a great way to win it. Luke one two into his first final of 2022, having already secured a place in the World Tour Finals. In fact, it's his first final in four years. And he's done it at the expense of two Malaysians. Excellent work from him. It's been a great match, though. Yeah, as you can see in that rally, beautiful defense by both players, high intensity, really exciting. He was just the more composed player today. Yeah, Ultio certainly played his part in it, didn't he? And I wonder how much of that, in the end, will go down to that back problem. Let's not take anything away from the superb performance from Lu Guangzhou, who's beaten Malaysia's Ung Tiong 21 18, 21 15. He's done it in 50 minutes. And he's on his way to the men's singles final here at the Australian Open. Welcome to the live coverage of the Satyo Group Australian Open 2022. We're into semi-finals day here at Key Centre at the Sydney Olympic Park for 